Hi, this is Alec from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record Yogi and Boo Boo, Little Red Riding Hood from 1977. So let's get started. Well, Boo Boo, my itty bitty buddy, I told you a bitty bye type story. So now how's about a little hibernation nap? <sighs> that Jack and the Beanstalk story did make me a little bit sleepy. Maybe if you told me another bedtime story, I could do some serious hibernating. Okay, Boo-Boo. Just relax. And your favorite storyteller, name of Yogi Bear, will tell you the story of Little Red Type Riding Hood. Once upon a time, to coin a cliché, in a little old cottage at the edge of a hairy, scary woods, there lived a little girl and her mother. On her birthday, the little girl received a beautiful red riding hood from her grandmother. She liked the hood so much, she wore it all the time, even over her pajamas. So the people in the neighborhood started calling her Little Red Riding Hood. Anywho, whilst Little Red Riding Hood was doing her uh, homework, from her poor old grandmother, Galak. Hi, Granny Baby. Says Little Red Riding Hood. What's up? Well, says Grandma. To tell you the truth, I'm not feeling too sharp. You know, I got aches and pains, headaches, a sinus condition, and like that. But otherwise, I feel super. Well, where do you hurt most? Well, I hurt all over more than anywhere else. What you need? Says Red Riding Hood. Is a good hot meal. I'll whip up a few goodies and buzz over to your house. Crazy! Says Granny. And with that, she hung up. After all, she was out of the toll-free area. So Little Red Riding Hood got out her big cookbook and started mixing up a lot of yummies. Lunch was all prepared. Red Riding Hood slipped on her sneakers and hopped on her scooter. And away she went for Grandma's house. Being in a big hurry, Little Red Riding Hood drove off the freeway and took a shortcut through the woods. But today just wasn't Little Red Riding Hood's lucky day. She hadn't gone ten miles when... She heard the sad wail of a motorcycle patrolman bearing down on her. That's all right. I'm only doing 99 miles an hour. All right, Gus Grissom. You trying to get back in orbit? Roars the cycle jockey. But, officer, my name's not Gus Grissom. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Couldn't you tell by the Red Riding Hood? How do I know that's not just a disguise? And you're a notorious international spy. Let me take a look at your driver's license. <laughs> Why not? My papers are all in order. Hmm, I thought so. You're not really Little Red Riding Hood. That's just a numb de plum. What makes you talk that away? My names are my driver's license, can't you read? Never mind, can I read? What you got in that basket? Contraband? Stolen crown jewels? Plans for an interplanetary bus. Oh, cool it. Says Red. It's just a bunch of lunch I'm taking to my grandmother. Open it up. I don't take any chances. Okay. Says Red. Looky, vanilla matzo ball, four, sweet and sour, french fried buttermilk. Mmm. -hmm. Said the lawman. I'd better take all these goodies along with me. As evidence. Evidence of what? I'll think of something, says the motor cop, grabbing at the basket. But Little Red could see that the motor cop wasn't a real motor cop, but some kind of a phony. So she grabbed a basket of goodies and blasted off to the woods, leaving the phony fuss behind. Wow, my disguise almost worked, but I'll get that Little Red Riding Hood yet. My name ain't the Big Bad Wolf. Is that the end 
to the store, Yogi? No, Bubba. I'm just building up to the denouement. The what, Yogi? You know, the climax. You see, the wolf figured he would get to Grandma's house ahead of Red Riding Hood and grab her when she arrived. Soon, the big bad wolf skidded up to the front of Grandma's cottage. He knocked on the door. Okay, okay, so we dingle the chimes. Who's there? Answered Grandma. It's only me, little red. Me, it's only me. Little old me, you know, little red riding hood. I brought you a whole basket full of goodies. Open the door, Granny. Okay, said Granny. But instead of coming to the door, Granny went out the back door, climbed off on the roof with a bucket of hot water, and dumped it on the wolf. Sandy put out Fox. He went yelping into the woods. Well, by now the wolf was getting a little fed up with being outspotted. And just when he was about to give up, he got one of his sneakiest ideas. He dashed downtown to a costume shop where they rent costumes for Halloween and parties and like that. I'd like to rent a little red riding hood outfit. You see, I'm going to a costume party as little red riding hood. Well, only minutes later, there was another rap at the door. Uh, the chimes rang. Who's there? Asked Grandma. It's only little old me. Said the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood. How can I be sure? Asked Granny suspiciously. Just look out the window and see. Said the sneaky old wolf, putting on his dark glasses. And when Grandma saw the bright Red Riding Hood, she opened the door and let the wolf in. I'm not one to criticize, Little Red, says Grandma, but I think you ought to get a shave. Shave? Uh-oh, it's not Little Red Riding Hood at all. It's the Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> what a stink. It takes one to know one, chuckles the wolf. And with that smart aleck remark, the Big Bad Wolf grabbed Granny and locked her in the closet. <coughs> then wearing a shawl and one of Granny's lace nightcaps, the wolf jumped in the bed, dialed in the electric blanket, pulled the covers up to his nose, and waited for Little Red Riding Hood to come along. While he was waiting, the wolf decided to turn on the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special police bulletin. Be on the lookout for a big, shaggy, ugly wolf, known to be lurking in the woods near Grandma's house. He's about three feet tall, weight about 90 pounds. When last seen, he was wearing a dirty, mangy, old overcoat, and his teeth looked like he'd forgotten to brush after every meal. Suspect is Caucasian and goes by the name of Big Bad Wolf. That is all. And now, back to that new musical group called the Cotton Pickin' Guitar Pickers. Well, a wolf had to act fast. The police were closing in on him. But could they find him before he found Little Red Riding Hood? And about that time, the wolf heard a familiar sound. Who should walk up and knock on the front door? But Little Red Riding Hood. What's wrong with the chimes, Yogi? All right. That's better. Well, to get back to the plot, Little Red Riding Hood called out. Anybody home? Who is it? Called out the wolf in his granny voice. It's me, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. Well, don't you stand there, child. Come on in. So, not knowing what had happened to her grandmother, poor little Red Riding Hood put the basket down and walked over to the bed to see how her poor granny was getting along. How are you feeling, granny? Oh, fair to middling. I've sort of got the miseries. What I need is a little nourishing food. I got all kinds of goodies for you, granny. How about a nice hot bowl of pasta for zoo? Crazy! Won't you join me for a little cake of cakey? But just as Red Riding Hood started to fix a nice ball of pasta puzzle, she heard a noise. What was that? Oh, that? That's termites. The place is just crawling with termites. And why do you have the shades down, Granny? Oh, that? Uh, well, the sun hurts my eyes, so I pull down the shades. Well, I'll buy the wolf. And that's why you're wearing dark glasses, Granny? What else? 
Come closer, little Red Riding Hood. Show us I can see you. But when Red Riding Hood got closer to what she thought was her grandma, she noticed how strange your granny looked. My, my granny. You must be sicker than you thought. You look so funny. You mean funny, ha ha, or funny she? I mean funny, yeah. Elucidate, my child, elucidate. Well, for instance. Is that right? What big eyes you got. You better do, you know, she you with. Answer the wolf, who is always quick with an ad lib. And like, what big ears you got, Grandma. You better do, you know, hear with. Explain the wolf. And how do you explain the pointed ears, Grandma? Well, stall the wolf. That's a long story which we won't go into until you're older. And for goodness sakes, Granny, what's with those hairy hands? Well, I guess I'm using too much detergent in my dishwashing. And that's not all, Granny. Is that right? You got a big, big mouth. Match, you better to eat you with. And with that remark, he started chasing Little Red Riding Hood around the room. <laughs> around and around and around he went. Until the wolf was just about to grab Little Red Riding Hood. But just as he reached out to grab her... Who left that skateboard in the bedroom? Screamed the angry old wolf. Okay, I'm getting tired of being a nice guy. I'm going to get tough. But little did the old wolf know that little Red Riding Hood had been taking a correspondence course in judo. In fact, she had a black belt. Well, it wasn't exactly black, but it was dirty. And when the big bad wolf lunged at little Red, she gave him a big judo chop. And the wolf fell to the floor in a pile. Soon as the wolf hit the floor, Red Riding Hood heard that same noise coming from the closet. Boy, has Granny got termites. Hmm, Granny, wonder where the old girl is. Probably out getting her surfboard waxed. <coughs> Hello, what's that? Exclaimed little Red Riding Hood as she walked over to the closet. Unlocked the door and found her poor old granny all tied up like a Christmas gift. And that's the end of the story of Little Red Riding Hood, Yogi. Well, that's where the story usually ends, but I heard that there's more to it, Boo Boo. So tell me what happened next, Yogi. Little Red got on the horn and buzzed the fuzz. And. <laughs> What's the trouble? It's this dirty old wolf. I want him booked. What's the charge? The charge... Is that right? ...is telling fibs, masquerading as granny without a license and overacting. I'll be down later to sign a complaint. All right, big bad wolf. You'd better come along with me. When well, no, I'm innocent. I don't want. I'm innocent. It's a friend. A bum rap. I demand to see my lawyer. You're arresting an innocent man. But the big bad wolf was taken to jail and booked just the same. And that's the end of the story, Yogi? Almost. The big bad wolf got himself a smart lawyer and almost beat the rat. How could he do that, Yogi? Well, you know what a prevaricator he was. As a matter of fact, you just can't believe anything a wolf tells you. Anyhow, at the trial, the big bad wolf took the stand in his own defense and told his side of the story. Your Honor, said the wolf, fibbing through his teeth. It all started when I was walking through the woods, on my way to take some warm soup to a sick friend. I'm always doing good deeds like that. It's just the way I am. When the plaintiff, uh, Miss Red Riding Hood, came along, and I noticed she was crying. Well, I never could stand to see a woman cry, so I politely asked her if I could be of any help. Well, well, she tells me a phony story about having a sick granny and all that jazz. Well, I felt so sorry for the poor dear that I went home and made a nice pot of soup and took it to her ailing granny. 
Well, you can imagine my surprise when I walked into Granny's house and the two of them jumped me. I screamed for help, but nobody heard me. It seems that the plaintiff, a Miss Red Riding Hood, and her so-called Granny were running a phony fur coat racket. They were going to tan my hide, dye it gray, and sell it as a mink stole. Can you imagine that? He's not telling the truth, Your Honor. Exclaimed Red Riding Hood. Oh, yes, I am. I give the wolf. If I'm not telling the truth, may I get struck by lightning. And he was struck by lightning. And that taught the big bad wolf a lesson he'll never forget, boo-boo. Telling a big fib will only get you in a mess of trouble. A little red riding hood was a chick with the little old granny who was awful sick. So she went to visit the granny one day and met a big bad wolf on the way. Don't sweat it, Red. Don't be alarmed, said the big bad wolf with his phony charm. Just want to warn you about the big bad box and ask you what you got in the big lunch box. Just a few goodies, one kind or another. I'm fetching to my poor sick grandmother. I'm sorry, old wolf, but I can't stay. And with that, little red went on her way. Now the wolf let her go, but not for good, cause he had plans for Red Riding Hood. And when she arrived at Granny's pad, Red didn't know it, but she had been had. Come on in, she heard Granny call, but it wasn't really Granny at all. Setting up in bed, to her surprise, was Little Red's Granny with great big eyes. What big eyeballs you got, says Red, and pointed ears on top of your head. But the wolf just smiled and winked and grabbed Red Riding Hood, the fake. But little did that old wolf know that little Red had learned you know. She quickly raised her hand and pop, she gave that wolf a judo chop. And that is how the story ends. Now the wolf and Little Red definitely are friends. But he learned a lesson and learned it good. Don't fool around with uh, Red Riding Hood. So that was Yogi Bear and Boo Boo, Little Red Riding Hood for 1977. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.